The deadliest all-female concentration camp of the Second World War was Ravensbrück. It was opened in May 1939 and operated right up until the end of the conflict, and during the war around 130,000 inmates passed through the barbed wire fences. The death toll at Ravensbrück is unknown, and it ranges from between 30,000 to 90,000 people who succumbed to the terrible conditions there. Many different people from different backgrounds were imprisoned, from British SOE women spies to even a 25-year-old French princess. Executions were carried out at Ravensbrück, and the largest single group of women killed there were 200 young Polish women belonging to the Home Army, and over the years many different commandants oversaw the evil conditions. There was a shortage of food, and women were forced to work incredibly hard, and disease also ran rampant, but also the Nazis carried out many medical experiments upon the women. However, this was not the first all-female concentration camp opened by the SS, as two years before an all-male camp was changed to become a women's camp. Join us today as we look at the first female concentration camp, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Although Ravensbrück was intended to be a purpose-built all-female camp when it was opened by Heinrich Himmler, a number of prisoners were transferred there from Lichtenborg concentration camp. Lichtenborg was one of the first concentration camps built and opened by the Nazis, following Hitler taking control, and it was operated by the SS from 1933 to 1939. It was not the biggest site, and was found inside an old Renaissance castle in Pretin, near to Wittenberg in Saxony. When it first opened, it held as many as 2,000 male prisoners, but following 1937, the male population was sent to other sites, and they made way for women who became the prisoners there. It served as the first central women's concentration camp for the whole of Hitler's Third Reich until May 1939. It is known that the conditions at Lichtenburg were rather tough, over the years it had a number of different men who acted and served as a commandant of the camp, including Theodor Eicher, who later became the commandant of Dachau, and he was the first commandant. Other notable names who ran the site include Hermann Baranowski, who later became a terrifying guard at Dachau, and also Alexander Piotrkowski, who would be there at the camp when it became a site for women. He later oversaw Dachau, and was later executed for his crimes. Piotrkowski would act as a deputy director of the camp also at times, and the director of the women's camp was Gernfer Tomaszk. Most of the inmates there were prisoners who were considered political or habitual offenders, people who disagreed with the Nazi regime, and many of the women imprisoned were communist or held communist beliefs. These were considered enemies of the Nazis, and they rounded up many of their enemies, and they were sent to concentration camps also such as Dachau. One woman who was held at Lichtenburg was Lena Haag, who was an anti-fascist activist. She was a youth member of the Communist Party of Germany, and then she became a member of the regional parliament for the Communist Party, until Hitler rose to power. But when Hitler seized control, he ordered her arrest, and she was imprisoned at Lichtenburg, and in a shock move she eventually managed to turn the camp commandant of the site against the Stuttgart Gestapo, and she was eventually freed. Following her release, she managed to petition for her husband's release, who had suffered torture at Dachau, and she lived to the remarkable age of 105. Another prisoner was Lottie Huber, who was a German actress who later in life would appear in many films in the 80s and 90s. Also imprisoned at Lichtenburg was Olga Benario Prestes, who was a German-Brazilian communist militant. She was born to a Jewish family, and she worked as an instructor of the Communist Youth International in the Soviet Union, France and Britain. She fled to Brazil, and some believed she was a spy for the Soviets, but she was later arrested in Brazil, and then shockingly was extradited to Nazi Germany. She was sent to Lichtenburg in 1938, and was later transferred to Ravensbrück a year later, and she was then gassed at the Bernburg Center, where she was gassed along with hundreds of other female political prisoners. Lisa Oderich was also a German politician, who was sent to Lichtenburg, and she became a member of the Reichstag as a communist when the Nazis took over power, she was banned from Parliament. She took part in underground communist meetings, but she was detained and charged with preparing high treason. She was sentenced to time in concentration camps, and it was at Lichtenburg in December 1937 where she was held. She claimed that whilst there, her arm was broken when she was forced by a guard to walk across a sheet of ice and she fell. The camp's authorities did accept that the accident was the fault of the guard who forced her to do this, but Ulrich, 
insisted that she needed medication and better food to compensate for how her body was broken following her time at Lichtenborg. She was not given any better treatment, but a camp doctor did place her arm in plaster, and they did come to inspect her. At these inspections were two SS guards who monitored her every move, and these guards often came into conflict with the doctor. She was given carrots to eat, and was allowed to buy fruit, but any other instruction from the doctor was ignored, and when her plaster cast was removed, her arm had not really healed. Whilst at Lichtenberg, she was visited by Heinrich Himmler, who asked her what was wrong with her arm. During the meeting, Himmler stated how the Nazis struggled to make life better for working people, and Ulrich even asked him if the Nazis were acting out the agenda of the Communist Party secretly, and if this was the case then why had Lisa Ulrich been questioned and why had she been imprisoned for a number of years, she asked. Like so many camps across the Third Reich, Lichtenberg did develop a reputation for being brutal and violent, and also very tough. The prison itself was very run down, and it's believed that over time the camp became rather overcrowded, with more women who were dissident to the Nazis being imprisoned there, following their arrests, as it was one of the only places they could go, rather than a normal jail or prison. Also the conditions were poor, and food rations were not sufficient enough to sustain the inmates, and disease was known to have spread quickly. But in May 1939, the women who were inside the camp were transferred to Ravensbrück, and they became the first inmates there, with a mass transport of 900 women arriving, and quickly after the war began, Ravensbrück would be at capacity. Following this transfer of inmates, Lichtenberg was then closed down and was not operational. When some of the inmates arrived at Ravensbrück, they were surprised by the conditions there, compared to other sites. One woman said, I looked across the great square and could not believe my eyes. It was surrounded by manicured lawns, covered by flower beds, on which bloomed bright red flowers. A wide street which led to an open area was flanked by two rows of wooden barracks. On both sides stood rows of young trees, and along the roadside ran straight flower beds as far as the eye could see. The square and the street seemed freshly raked. To the left towards a watchtower, I saw a white wooden barrack, and beside it a large cage, the size of a birdhouse like you see at a zoo. Within it paraded peacocks, and on a climbing tree dangled monkeys and a parrot, which always screamed the same word, Mama. I wondered this is a concentration camp, but quickly the image of the camp, being picturesque, would be shattered by the violence of the guards. Quickly it became a site where conditions broke down, and much violence occurred, with one young Belgian woman describing the site as, They didn't shoot the women. We were to die of misery, hunger and exhaustion. When we arrived at Ravensbrück it was the worst. The first thing I saw was a cart with all the dead piled on it. Their arms and legs hanging out, and mouths and eyes wide open. They reduced us to nothing. We didn't even feel like we had the value of cattle. You worked and you died. But many of the women of Lichtenburg were the first prisoners of Ravensbrück, and they would be subjected to horrific ordeals at the site, they became part of the many thousands who would never make it out alive. With regards to Lichtenburg, it was the first all-female SS concentration camp established, where many prominent female prisoners would be sent to, but it was also shut down before the war broke out, but many of the guards who worked there would later go on to become brutal beasts at other sites such as Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz. Thank you for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.